Hey, it's Jake here from Network Nerve, and I'm going to be covering something that's not really covered all too much, which is uh, LVHAGL with Java. And in this tutorial series, for now, I'm just going to be going over how to make a simple Pong game. Uh, it'll teach you basically the basic things you need to know, like inputs, uh, rendering, uh, pretty much all the basic stuff that's in almost in any game that you need to know. And should help you a lot. So what you want to do is go to Eclipse. Uh, I'm using a custom theme in case you're wondering. Uh, go to New Project. Type in Pong. And then open up that. And you should see there's just source in the JRE system library. And then go to your workspace, wherever you have that. I've been in workspace tutorials you should see that Pong folder, the project you just created. Open that up, and in most projects you're going to want to have at least two folders to make after you uh, make the project, which is assets, where you store textures, sounds, fonts, pretty much anything that's considered a resource. And you're also going to want like, libraries. This will hold LDBJGL, and in any other library you uh, choose to include. Uh, doesn't really matter, just put it in here and include it later. But go back to Pong. And then uh, right click on your project on the left, Patch Explorer, and click on Refresh. And you should see those two folders you just made. That way you know you actually, actually worked. So now you're going to want to go to Google, any web browser you choose. Type in LBJGL. Um, should be this link, LBJGL.org. Um, and then go to their website. Uh, click on download on the left. And click on latest stable release. Uh, you can get the nightly, but it's buggy. It's got new features, but it's just best to stick with the most stable release for now. If you're feeling brave, you can use the nightly, though. So I've already downloaded it since it takes like a minute, uh, which is right here. Just open it with WinRAR or whatever archiving program you want to use. Um, and then just go to Extract to and find wherever your workspace is. Uh, workspace Tutorials, Pong, and you're going to put in the Libraries folder. And then just extract it. And then go back to here. Make sure it's actually there. Yep, LWJGL. And then go back to Eclipse. And right click on your project again. Click refresh. And you should see it's right there. So now to actually import it, you want to go to Project, Properties, Java Build Path, and Libraries. And then you want to click on Add External Jars and then add all these. Uh, you select the ones you need, I just select all of them just for it's like the tutorial. Um, and there's one more step, you need to go to lwjgl.jar uh, click that arrow on the left and then go to native library location. It should already say none. And we're gonna want to set that to, again go back to your uh, wherever you have your workspace. I'm going to find that really quick. Workspace Tutorials, Pong, and then go to your Libraries folder, and it should be a folder called uh, oh. It should be a folder called Jar, yeah. Right, no, actually, Natives, yeah. Now select the one you want to use for, like say you're on Windows, I'm going to select Windows. If you're on Linux, select the Linux folder. Um, your operating system should be supported in this. And then just click OK, OK again, and click OK. And I just like to click refresh just to be sure. So from here, we want to click on the source folder, and then right click, and then do new package. Um, usually I start with the extension of the 
website that you're from and then the actual name of it. So the extension should be com and then another package uh, dot network nerve and then click finish again and then from here you want to type in dot src for your source folder so you should see com dot network nerve dot source and then right click on that again go to new class and this will be our main class called pong and you should see your package here and then class declaration so from here you want to make your main method where everything runs public site void main string ARGS and then from here I like to make four methods that kind of breaks it down uh, init and then init gl and then game loop and then cleanup and you should see a red line so if they haven't been made yet so start making them uh, so now once your net thing is uh, made you should see the red underline disappear so private static void init gl private static game loop and you're actually going to want to set let me set the parameter later private static oh, I forgot to add void void cleanup alright, so all those red lines should be gone no errors so from here create a public or actually just make it private private static pong instance. This will be the instance of your class that's passed around so you can access anything inside this class. Uh, set all your variables to instance, not this. That's, you could screw something up. And then basically in your init method you just do instance equals new pong. And that should create your instance of your main class that you can pass around to any other class that uses it. Um, and from here you're going to want to make a window. That should be probably the most basic thing. Um, different try catch lwjgl exception e e.printStackTrace and you're also going to want um, oh, you're going to want to also make public static boolean is running except that's true um, also you're going to want to set public string title and you can set to whoever you want called pong public string version equals 0 0.0.1 .0 and you're also going to want to set uh, an integer public int display width and set that to 800 public int display height 600 and that should be good for the variables for now so this is just the title that's going to be used uh, in the for the title of the window, and this should be the version in case you ever do some sort of like version control, like an updating system. Um, these are the two dimensions of the window that we're going to use later, and this is going to be the variable that uh, tells all threads and loops 
uh, whether or not the game is still running and whether or not they need to stop. By default it's true, but if another variable says to false, then all the loops should end. So from here, put is running equals false. And then from here we're gonna put display dot set display mode um, new display mode and we're gonna want to set instance dot display width comma instance dot display height and we're also gonna want to import display mode Make sure you don't use Java AWT. Make sure you select the one that's from org to LDJGL to OpenGL. And now the, all the errors are gone. So now from here, we're going to want to do display dot set initial display background. Um, 1.0F, 1.0F, and 1.0F is basically an RBG for like red, green, blue, and you mix uh, all them together you get white, which is what we want. You can change the colors if you want, but I like to keep it kind of clean, put it white, uh, and it put display uh, dot set title, then you can do instance dot title. Uh, and then the last thing for this part is display dot create. So now your window should open. Yeah. So let's just run that. You should see it open and close. And the reason for that is uh, you never actually set a loop to keep it running. So it's going to assume as soon as you run it, there's nothing else to do. So it's going to close. So for our cleanup method we're just going to want to put is running equals false and display dot destroy and this will make sure that all loops are ended and the window is uh, destroyed so from here in our game loop we can do while display dot is close requested and then put a little exclamation point before it to tell it what it not it's uh and then put it is running so what this uh loop is doing is it's uh checking if someone's trying to close the window and as long as no one is trying to close the window that's why we put this little exclamation point uh then it'll keep running as if uh, is running is also true. So if either one of those is false, then this loop will end. And then from here you want to do uh, this play dot sync to 60 FPS. You can cap that to whatever you want, but this will make sure it always runs at the maximum of this FPS. That way you, you don't get any like weird FPS lag spikes that might kind of interfere with your gameplay. And then do display dot update. And this will keep the uh, updating the display. So from here you're going to want to type in gl11 dot gl clear and gl11 dot gl underscore color underscore buffer underscore bit and then put a little pipe symbol gl11 dot gl underscore depth depth underscore buffer underscore bit and this will just basically clear the colors and the buffer and everything and then one more thing is gl11 dot gl under or no gl load identity yeah so from here whatever's in between these two uh, things this is where you're gonna put all your rendering 
for each frame. So just to make sure it's working, let's just run it. So the window stays open, you should see Pong as your title in that variable, and it's a white background, doesn't really do anything, but it's updating the frame. It's capping to 60 FPS, which is exactly what we want. So it's doing everything we need it to do. Um, so from here, this should be good for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll probably be going over uh, just rendering, making an entity class, uh, keyvines. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, or any kind of suggestions for the series, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll get back to you in the comments. So, until next time. <laughs>